Hello, this is Craig, and I came up with an idea for a game, and I don't have time to build the prototype, so I'm just going to kind of talk about it. Um, this is fundamentally a game about Power Rangers, but you don't play the guys in the suits. You play the nerds in the back. So you play the guy that creates all of their suits, and their guns, and their morphers, and their giant mechs, and whatever else, right? Um, you play the support characters, and you get to choose who becomes a ranger and which people get which colors, um, but you don't actually go out and fight. That's all automated. How is this fun? Well, the mechanics in building these units, these uh, pieces of, of devices, uh, those are th that's where the fun is. If you've ever played a programmatic game on a 2D grid, like, say, Carnage Hearts, what happens is that uh, you'll have some kind of program thing where you control, uh, you, you lay down a circuit pattern, right? And then it, uh, it does the various things that, are, that you put down in the various nodes. And there might be if statements that make it uh, go in different directions depending on conditions. And in short, the mech or whatever will act according to the system that you've put down. And the reason that these systems are fun uh, is because they have a lot more limitation than a normal programming utility. You can't put in subroutines. Um, it's actually variables themselves are actually quite difficult. And instead, you have this 2D grid where that's the big limit, and you start to have to both take into account uh, uh, and take advantage of the actual physical space. Uh, and it's a really interesting thing, and if you've never played a game like this, you could play Carnage Heart, which is a quite, quite aging at this point. It's a PlayStation game. Um, I'm not aware of any other games that do it quite, quite as nicely, but the basic concept should be, should be familiar to you. Um, so if we're going to talk about something based off Power Rangers, then the obvious power source for this would be light. And we're not actually trying to control the individual rangers. We're instead trying to design their uh, devices and suits and so on. So, if we have light coming in, the whole idea is to harness this light to use it to do whatever we need it to do. And for something like a suit that's pretty basic, you just want the light to uh, uh, hit a couple of, of uh, uh, power up, you know, strength boost, uh, speed boost, uh, endurance boost, whatever the stats are, right? That's really what you want. And then the light passes through them, and each one just drains a little bit off of the, off of the light, um, however much it's built to drain. Uh, or, alternately, you could split them up like this with a splitter, and then do each one of them separately so they drain all the light uh, and that you know that way they can if you boost the light then they get more juice um, or you could do a longer chain and however much light if you get extra light in then it just goes further along the chain this is a very simple idea right uh, you're just setting it up so that light comes in uh, and there are some light reactive devices that give your character boosts and in addition to boosts, you can do a lot of other things with this, like uh, grant them special abilities or, uh, or decrease the amount of stress they suffer from having their stats boosted too much. But fundamentally, this is not a programmatic uh, application. You're just looking at giving them some pretty flat stat boosts. The programmatic part happens with the rest of the devices, so the suits are a good intro. The rest of the devices, however, are where you start to get to the meat. For example, let's talk about the Morpher. The Morpher is simply a device that uh, allows the unit to morph when they want to morph, rather than always being morphed. And it works by flipping it open. So that's a mechanical trigger. So let's go ahead and say that there's some tile called a mechanical trigger tile. And what it does is it changes the states of all of its neighbor tiles. So if a neighbor tile was down, or if a neighbor, if a neighbor, if a neighbor tile, tile was set in position, it would unset it, and if it was unset, it would set it. So if we are going to do it like that, then what we, would, what we could do is we'd have a beam of light coming in, 
and we would have an unset suit. So the beam of light doesn't hit the suit. The beam of light passes through it, and that means that the character doesn't is the suit isn't active. The character is is in human form, civilian form. So when the unit is flipped open, this changes the state of all of the surrounding tiles, and this is brought in to the line of uh, of the light and starts getting powered. And this, of course, blocks the light off and absorbs the light. Um, so the suit turns on, and you get uh, you get your juice. Easy enough, right? But this can be a little bit more interesting because we can put a mirror here, and then we can put a power gem here. And now, when the power gem is set, all it does is soak up all the light that hits it, and it stores some fraction of that as light it can emit. When it's unset, it emits that light back in the direction that it originally absorbed the light from. So, in this state, uh, it continually soaks up the excess, the light that comes in uh, when you're not in your suit, and then when you turn on your suit, the light coming from here is absorbed by the suit. But remember that the trigger uh, uh, sets everything that's not set and unsets everything that is set. So this becomes unset, which causes the energy to flow back out the direction it came, bounce down, and get absorbed by the suit. So in this way, you can get double juice for your suit, uh, or even more than double juice. You can get a huge amount of energy for your suit, uh, depending on how efficient this is and how long you go between suit summons. So you can start to see that there is a, like, a little hint of, uh, of cool things that you could be doing with this. And this starts to really come to light when you start to use uh, something, you know, mech design, where you have to start doing some serious uh, some serious engineering. And uh, this can become quite complex with the use of different kinds of triggers uh, and things like uh, 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 broadcast, sim broadcast signals such that when it's set it broadcasts a signal and there's another kind of trigger which if it detects that signal it triggers and you can do it between rangers or in the same ranger or there's, there's a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of stuff you can do. And the key here is that the light is not necessarily, there's not necessarily just one beam. It can get very complicated. Like in this situation here, we have two beams, one coming up from the source and one coming out from the power gem. And there are plenty of situations where you'd want to wrangle, you know, half a dozen beams of light, um, all doing different things and to different units, um, splitting up and then merging back together and whatever else you needed to do. So the topology here is there are some, going to be some tight clusters of functional units, usually uh, centered around triggers, right? And then there's going to be like uh, some dancing lights trying to connect things up with the right amount of energy and some kind of occasional gating subsystems. Now all of this is pretty basic. It's just uh, uh, trying to to get all of the energy to the places it's supposed to go, and making sure that the energy is used correctly when it's not you know when it's not don't just waste the energy. Uh, use it correctly. Have different variants. Uh, when things start to go south, you'd have triggers that go off when the rangers get panicked or whatever. But there's one more thing about this that is why it is a fairly interesting take on this basic idea. And that is the concept of damage. So when you're building a suit, uh, the, the idea is that uh, you, know, you, got, you, got your, uh, you got your silhouette of your ranger. Actually, it'd be more like this. You got a silhouette of your ranger uh, of both directions. So you've got a front silhouette and a back silhouette. Right, and the only place you can actually put stuff is on this silhouette. So this is the grid. Now, as you might guess, battle damage actually hits at specific parts on the ranger, which allows you to to, to do, uh, which allows which means that anything in that location is at risk. Now, battle damage can simply break stuff. So, if you've got a trigger, 
and you know you've got something here that boosts strength and whatever. Um, if your if your ranger takes damage, you might knock these offline, or you might crack this trigger, which changes its state and freezes it there. But more importantly, excuse me, more importantly, uh, it has a couple of other side effects. Physical hits uh, from getting punched and so on will actually damage the strata. They'll actually damage the circuit board. So if you have a beam of light that's just passing across an area and someone hits you hard, they'll rupture here and they'll create uh, you know, a, a set of, of debris coming up like this, which will actually deflect the light. How much of the light varies depending on the amount of damage, so some might still get through the cracks, and some of it will go off in whatever other direction. Um, so that's physical damage, and you can see how adjusting your st your system so that it under you know so that you have some kind of fallback or you have some sort of situation uh, where you know you don't want your characters to demorph because they took damage that happened to deflect a beam of light. So you need to take that into account. Uh, and of course, there are areas that are more likely to get hit and areas that are less likely to get hit. So you don't generally put beams of light across your unit's chest because that's the most likely place for you to get hit. You don't want those beams of light to be deflected. On the other hand, energy attacks do just the opposite. Uh, so if you have an energy attack that hits you, so you've got a beam of light that goes in here and it hits a whole bunch of stuff, right? and you've got uh, some other stuff over here. And the whole idea here is that uh, you're, you've got the suit running close to the edge. And the idea is that if this takes battle damage, then this will activate and pull this light over. And so you'll have the same situation. This is basically a duplicate. You don't want both of these to be on for two reasons. First off is you don't have enough power to fuel them both. And the second is that it would actually overload the ranger. The rangers can only take so much stat boost before they start to, to suffer stress. And the ranger that gains too much stress has an episode uh, de dedicated to them, which means that they're generally doing something wacky and taken offline for an extended period of time. Uh, or turn, you know, or get a clone of themselves, or turn evil, or whatever. So you generally want to try and keep stress low. So this is a backup system. But what happens if, with an energy attack is when an energy attack hits, they dump random blasts of light wherever they hit. Uh, so if an energy attack hits here, it just randomly creates splotches of light, and it probably isn't even the same color light, so you're going to get uh, the wrong resonance. Uh, so not only will this stuff activate, but you'll also take, uh, it'll, it'll activate at slightly the wrong, wrong harmonic, and uh, it'll create even more stress. Uh, you'll also risk burning out components that are too weak for that light. So uh, you get the double whammy here. You've got the physical attacks, which can deflect light and keep it from reaching the things you dedicate it to, as well as knocking units offline just by pure blunt force. And then you've got the energy attacks, which drop light onto the field and can burn out units, activate units you don't want to activate, and generally screw up your logic system. And I think that that's really cool. I think that's a really fun idea um, to have to not only build this fairly... Uh, you, you've got enough. You've got enough power that you can build a fairly complicated system with a lot of logic gates and conditionals. But you've also got to worry about how that system will react in combat when you get smashed around. And sure, you can try and come up with this really, really great um, multi-unit energy transfer, uh, you know, response system where uh, three or four rangers can all get together in a grid and uh, and share energy uh, coordinating their efforts, but that's kind of fragile. Uh, not only that, but this light has a mental effect as well. So, um, you know, if things start to get complicated and you accidentally dump just a crap ton of light straight into the ranger, uh, you're going to see them start to be uh, acting pretty funny. And I really like this concept because it is a very technically uh, uh, adaptable concept. Uh, before, I talked about the way that you've got the silhouette of the ranger as your design field, right? Uh, well, 
that's not just for the sake of controlling uh, you know, where damage gets put. What circuit pieces you put at the various parts on the Ranger will determine what the suit looks like. Pretty easy. Similarly, similarly if you st are trying to create an overlay, then you can play with a much wider area, and wherever you put down circuitry, that is going to turn into the overlay. Uh, that's what that that's going to be added on to the suit. And if you build a mech, the same thing happens. Uh, you can build it however you'd like, but uh, if you build it uh, arbitrarily, you're going to create these these uh, uh, both ugly and non-functional, just like giant blob things. And that's actually one of the cool parts is that if you're doing something like automated monster design, a circuit a piece of the circuit that goes a little bit out of control in terms of how you've designed it, your automated algorithms have designed it, that's actually kind of cool because it makes the monster have a limb or a, a growth in that area. And it really does give them that monstrous look because the monsters can run off of a very similar set of rules. Anyway, that was the idea I came up with, and I really do want to make a prototype for it because it seems like it'd be really fun, but that prototype would take me like two or three days, and I just don't have that kind of time right now. So I thought I'd just record this.